I'm so much taller than you. I think I need to point the thing yeah, up a little higher. Oh, got... you're on a low stool. Change the stool out. I've, I've had that stool for Noah and Amy so that they don't look too tall next to me. Oh, I see. Okay. We've been shooting marketing. There you go. Yeah, okay. Back there. I've got there these are. long lower legs, so you know. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, you stand almost 5'4 now. Yeah, 5'4. Yeah. <laughs> at least 5'7. <five>, I've <laughs> got to turn this up a little. We better do an introduction. Do you want to do the introduction this week? You go ahead. Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, here we are again. We're going to review the uh, weekend at Little Hammer and say a few things about Davos, I guess, right? That's the plan. That's the plan. Okay. Yes. So, Little Hammer, skiathlon, pursuit, whatever yeah, you call it. That was good. And uh, relay. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about the relay last time, and we'll get to that, but let's talk about the skiathlon first. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. What can I say? I, I didn't see much there that I was impressed with. Yeah. I'm sick of tactical races <laughs> on the guy's side. Yeah. It's kind of boring. It, uh, yeah, it looked a little bit like a tour race. Yeah. Did, don't you think? I, I think, you know, they were all skiing along. And as Wendy Broomhall used to say, it looked like they were going to a picnic. And, and I, I would say, yeah, they, they looked like they were touring. The only thing they were missing was the picnic baskets. They were kind of just cruising along. Well, what about the women's? Women. I mean, mean you've, got to, you've got to discuss the women's result in, oh, in the excellent. pursuit, right? Excellent. Now, I didn't that say much thing. about the... Uh, much of a prediction for the women in the relay because uh, I remember Stop I said... talking about the relay. Now back up just a minute. Huh? We need to talk about the pursuit, the women in the pursuit. Oh, the women in the pursuit. Yeah. Oh, well. They did well. Who was it? Diggins? Diggins was second, second place. place. Yeah. We yeah, had, she threw a move down on Heidi Vang that Heidi couldn't We had two more in cover. the top ten, didn't we? Sadie in eighth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not... not not in the top 10. Rosie, Rosie was 16th. Oh, good. That's yep. good. But that's great. Three in the top 16. Excellent. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, Especially in Norway, skiing against all the Norwegians. Yeah, that was... Hello, you're on the Johnny Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're shooting a video. You're, 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 you're going to be part of our marketing scheme here. <laughs> How... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you got to watch your language. What, what can I help you with? Uh, okay. Okay. Women's... Look, the U.S. women are a powerhouse. That's right. We have three megastars yeah. on that team right That's now. Right. And yeah. it's been a little while. We have... Uh, I think Sophie stands to do well in sprints all season long. And I think we're going to see more from Julia. And uh, I, I feel that, um, you know... Caitlin and Rosie Frankowski can bump in any time, and uh, I agree. you know we've seen we've seen that from both of them that yeah. they can pop up yeah. really well in the distance results. Yeah, it's so great. it's exciting. It's it's a reason to tune in every week. Yeah, that's right. It's really, Absolutely, really good stuff. Absolutely. Um, I'm sick of seeing Yoha win by so much. Frankly, it's well, it, it's kind of insulting to the sport. And <laughs> well, it, it just is. Yeah, it's <laughs> if. What bothers me is that if she was wearing a different suit, we'd all be rolling our eyes. She's been busted for lip balm. I mean, she's always, since she was a teenager, she's had an incredible physical capacity. It's no longer fun for me to watch. I don't have a particular reason to think that she's cheating, and she probably isn't, but it ruins the sport. I don't, yeah. I don't like this. She was far more interesting without mm. Johan there. She could uh, ski on any team and put him into the medal yeah. category. Yeah. I mean, the difference between the Norwegians three and the American three was minimal. Oh, in the relay, yeah. But uh, Johag put 40 or 50 seconds on the group. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so let's talk about the relay. Now, what did I say? That I said the, the U.S. team had their best chance for a relay win, and I called them for second, right? You did. You did. And you were very good at that. That was excellent. And so, I, was, so you're I, was, acknowledging... I was starting to say, I didn't know who was running first for the Americans, and I didn't want to say anything about the granddaughter. So she chewed me out in an email. She said, oh, oh, you and Zach don't have any faith in me, huh? Well, well you had, you did, I don't know if you knew who was running, but I didn't. I didn't know who was so, running. Uh, so let me, let me say oh, one... Like one other thing. If I had known Sophie was running first, and if it was going to be loose... 
powder snow, <laughs> that few people were better than Sophie in that, that crappy condition, powder snow, because she's light on her ski, she doesn't kick and slip, and uh, that made a big difference. And, and I think the coach knew that was coming, and that was one of the reasons he put her first. But Well, I, I totally agree. There, there were several options, all of which could have worked pretty well. Um, with the fresh snow and with the course uh, made somewhat easy. If you if you look at the video when they they do the first long climb, they yeah. cross, they wrap back uh, under the bridge, yeah. and um, and then they turn. They don't drop down to the bottom of the big long climb. They turn and then after a short climb, they turn and jump onto the downhill. Mm -hmm. So the really long climb that was in the men's course was almost completely removed from yeah. the women's course, yeah. and that was. Um, that absolutely puts a short distance racer or sprinter into the mix, sure. especially someone who has a phenomenal technical tool set in soft yeah. snow. And it's worth noting that Sophie had amazing classic skis. Yeah, she had, she had fantastic skis. Yeah. And the difference between Sophie and Julia in terms of the skis that they were working with was incredible. I feel like Julia was on, it looked to me like Julia was on some of the very high camber 902s that she really likes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Lillehammer in soft snow is a real bad place to be on yeah, those skis. Too bad. Sophie had really immediate yeah. kick yeah. and her yeah. speed was great. Uh, and the same can be said of Diggins in the pursuit. Best classic skis in the race. Mm -hmm. Sophie and uh, Jesse on two different days had absolutely phenomenal yeah. classic skis. Yeah. And that, that needs to be recognized because that hasn't always been the case with the ski team, and yeah, right. I, I feel like some of the credit for that result really has to has to lie with that waxing staff. They nailed in nailed that yeah, in difficult yeah, conditions on a tough course. I believe they put out uh, great team selections, great race service, great wax, and great performances across the board. With a special highlight for Rosie Brennan who shut down all kinds of time on Charlotte Colla for Chris yeah. Hicks. I mean, yeah. she had the leg of the day. Yeah. Without any question in my mind, Rosie was the rock star that, that made that relay happen. Yeah. And she, I... She pulled him right into contention. Yep. Bjornsson, Sadie, clipped off a couple of seconds. She did, and then she yeah. lost it. Yeah. <laughs> well. So she went, off, she went off plenty hot, yeah. and, uh, but she didn't... She, she absolutely kept him in the race. I doubt Sadie finished that feeling like she had knocked it out of the park. I don't yeah. I doubt she was super excited about her performance, but she is so good that she can have she can blow the race well, and have a great see, result. You can see her. She was strong throughout. Oh, I yeah. Mean, oh yeah. It didn't Yep. Maybe she didn't enjoy it, but she did did a hell of a job. <laughs> uh, right across the board that was that was fantastic racing. But let's also let's also acknowledge that well hey when we were talking before and I I, I couldn't come up with a good fourth skier for uh, Norway, I made the same mistake that, you know, we didn't really talk too much about Sophie for the U.S. because she's a sprinter. Of course, Norway has Megan for that opening leg on a relatively easy course, and uh, we didn't talk about that and should have. Should we get another guest? Call from Amy. Mm. So, uh, yeah, well, that was good. Now, Sweden. I'm going to read you some names. Well, yeah. Emma Rebaum, Elena Ruinland, <laughs> yeah. Charlotte Kala, I've heard of her, yeah. and Moa Lundgren, I've heard of her, but, yeah. but not as much. Well, there's Nielsen, and then you've read about Carlson, she's been yep. benched. Yep, yeah. for the same reason as Ilsberg. Uh I think so, she's just too light, I mean, so it's a... It's a, it's a uh, they, it, it's an eating disorder problem. I mean, to put it bluntly, the, the, the women are running too light, and there's yeah. a, there are good performance yeah. incentives for them to uh, to be incredibly light. Um, yeah. I think it's probably really positive that the teams are uh, are requiring them to hit certain physical markers, and I, I know yeah. they want to race those racers, so we can only support the they may They may. They'll come back. Sweet. Oh, yeah. And they'll, they'll come, come back, back strong. Yeah. But for Sweden to be third with that team... Uh, if they if they get Steena Nielsen back healthy, they get Ebba Anderson back healthy, and they get Frida Carlson back healthy, and Charlotte Kala comes into any kind of form, I still like them better than Norway. Yeah, even with Johaug in the race. Me too. I, uh, Sweden. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they beat him last year. Yep. So I think the Swedes overall are the biggest threat, the best. Yep. 
Yep. But that make, makes it interesting. That'll be good. Yeah, it'll be good. Okay, what we haven't talked about yet is the men's relay. And I want to—I want the first word on this. Yes, go ahead. Then. That was the worst ski race I think <laughs> I've ever seen. That was the most pathetic yes. race I've ever seen. Now, there were 11 teams in that race, 44 guys racing in an international relay in Norway, 44 men on the, on the start list. Um, two teams had, uh, two nations put up two teams, Russia and Norway. So uh, in addition to Russia and Norway, there were um, not very many nations represented. No, no Italy. No. No Czech. The Swiss there, I don't know. No Swiss. Uh, Germans were there. Germans were there. Kazakhstan was there. China was there. Right. No Japanese team. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that long ago the Japanese guys won the relay at World Junior Championships. I guess it was that long ago. Yeah. But in the last decade, you know, I, I just, this, if this is the sport that FIS wants to produce, if they can't create an incentive for the top racers to race, uh, they're doing it wrong. And I spoke with Chris Freeman, and the point that he made is the same point that you made. I said that this was a distance weekend and all the stars would race. I was wrong. And and it showed that 30K the day before was probably too much of a race to double up with the relay yeah. weekend. Yeah, I agree. And it made for the stupidest looking relay I think I've ever seen. It was, it was a well, tour for the first lap. It was... Um, mm -hmm. this even Niskanen raced, and he was unimpressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just... There was... And then Norway, I believe that the way Norway, Norway structured their teams, their two racers who have been getting good, like really good results in skate, Sherroth and uh, Seaman Hegstad Kruger, they put them on different teams, both on the same leg. So they, those guys went out and beat up on each other. They were the two strongest guys in the leg. Had they simply split those guys and put them both on the A team instead of Finn Haugen Krog, who has been one of my favorite racers, yeah, yeah. but is absolutely just not in top form, uh, I, think, I think they... They could have probably muscled their way to a win. Not that I was rooting for Norway in Norway. I love to see Norway get beaten in yeah, Norway. Yeah. Nothing better. Yeah. But, um, but, ah, that, I pulled up results from the last decade or so worth of World Cup non-championship relays. Um, and, you know, 2017 Orisa Ham, we had uh, a pretty light field only 14 teams, but super tight, really exciting racing. Um, we had Estonia in the race. Um, we had uh, Italy in the race. We had Switzerland in the race. We had Canada in the race. Canada, Switzerland, Italy, three, four, five on the finish line. With, without some depth in the in the representation, this racing is boring. There was yeah. that was the most boring race I've seen. Well, uh, I mean, there are. Every relay I could find in the last decade was more interesting than that. Lillehammer 2015, December 2015, so we're talking about another non-championship year, right? Everyone's kind of out um, and a similar schedule. There were 18 teams out there. and uh, Yeah, but, you know, there are several factors here. Number one, uh, it's kind of a... To, Put four guys onto a relay team. It's at the beginning of the season in Norway, racing classic in Norway uh, against Norway, who has a huge quota, and it's very expensive up there. And it's a trip. It's it's not very attractive to the countries in uh, Central Europe, and that's takes me into this weekend. I think you're going to see different results. You're going to see a much larger field in Davos in the sprint and in the, in the uh, two, uh, two individual races because so many countries like Italy and Switzerland, well, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, France, all those countries, Austria, they're right close by. They, they can drive over and race and drive home, be home for dinner, you know. But come, come to Lillehammer, is 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 a big trip for them. So why was it different four years ago? Because people, Norway is running itself 
it, Norway is so good that it's bad for the sport. I'm going to tell you, four years ago, Norway swept the top three positions on the podium, and I think they had a fourth team in the race as right. well. Right, exactly what I'm saying. And their stars raced. It's what? Their stars, their top skiers didn't even show up. We didn't have... Oh, I know. Well, so... Clavo, Everson. Why go to Norway and get your, excuse me, your butt kicked? You know, why? What's the point? But they, Norway can't even get their top skiers to win the relay at home. Like, well, they, when Norway doesn't deliver think, in Norway. No, I think that was a, that was a mistake on the uh, coach's part. The parliament, you know, the parliament met after the Russians took the first two places, the Norwegian parliament. There's something wrong, they said. And they, they blamed it on uh, wax and coach's decision. See, it couldn't, it couldn't be that the Norwegians would lose at home too. Oh, that's terrible. And, and the whole country is just upset. So, but they, I think they were, they, they might have been a little arrogant too. They t figured they wouldn't do it. And so, so uh, that was that. That was, uh, that was good. And I, I dare say the Norwegians lost because they probably didn't, they didn't ski their first team. Their best skiers, as, yeah. you, as you pointed out. I tuned into some biathlon racing from Ostersund as well as the World Cup racing this weekend, and the, the the contrast was so stark. I don't know about quotas or anything, but somehow biathlon has created an incentive structure to get nations racing. Yeah, the relay in biathlon in Ostersund had it was a pack. It looked like a mass start. There were Good. tons of teams Good. from all kinds of different it's nations. It's more popular than it's the most popular sport. Biathlon's and, and clearly Europe. done something right, and cross country is doing something very, very wrong when, yeah. when they can only yeah. get nine nations represented well, in, in the yeah. in the headline sport but, in Norway. But yeah, but they'll have more in doubles. They'll have more in all, well, all well, the I European hope, countries. I hope, but they've really got to ask themselves the question of you know how they're structuring things and why this is going so poorly because yeah. that was a terrible weekend things for the men's racing. Slowly at the FIS level. Yeah, they, well, not with wax regulations. They, they, they cut quotas. That's one big step. And they right. did that a year or two ago because I was in contact with some of the guys over there, particularly a friend in Finland. And uh, they see the problem. The coaches see the problem. But uh, why go to, as I say, why to go to Norway and get, oh, and, oh boy. Imagine entering just a national championships at Norway or an individual race in Norway. You'd be racing ninety percent against the Norwegians. Holy cow! Sure, of course you would. Be lucky to get in the top twenty, even if you were good. <laughs> I mean, they're loaded, and that's killing the sport. I I agree with you. 